But one album. At first, he's the doctor with the world's worst bedside manner and has turned grumpiness into an art form. Ah, uh, put him to bed, I should think, wouldn't you? He hasn't got a bed. Why not? It's a flat pack. I haven't put it together yet. He can sleep with me. Um, best not. Who? You might roll on him. I don't think I would. Here. Just jiggle him. Jiggle him up and down a bit. Please welcome Martin Clune. Nice. Yes, they're very pleasant. Good to <laughs> No, they are paid. Oh. Yes, they do. Um, they think, I know how nice you are. It must be wonderful to play somebody who's grumpy. Do you, do you enjoy being I against love it. character? I absolutely, being rough for the elderly and the young, <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's very liberating. <laughs> <laughs> we watched him get progressively more grumpy and progressively less good with all kinds of people. Yeah. But now he's a father. The series starts tonight, 9pm, ITV1. Yes, yeah. This is a whole new different dynamic, isn't it? How does, he, how does it affect him? Well, obviously he's convinced he's, he's expert at it, um, and he plainly isn't. Um, uh, but Louisa's, you know, gorgeous Caroline Katz has a, a natural maternal instinct, um, which he's not that keen on, um, and, and keeps trying to sort of project his, his, his medical expertise onto the subject. But in private, he has little moments throughout the series where there's a bit where he's sort of just left alone with the baby and he reads to him from a medical journal. <laughs> and we, it, we had some great, and a really sweet little Thomas that was. Uh, uh, he just, uh, you know, gave, looked like he was listening to everything I was saying. I showed him, showed him a picture of the professor who'd written the article. And, oh. <laughs> we actually had about twelve. We had twelve babies. We used um, in all, um, not because we threw any away, but just because you can't, <laughs> you can't always rely on these young actors to do what you want. <laughs> not so no, exactly. We'd, yeah. Each day, if it was a baby day, we'd have about three or four in various stages. The only way to control their, their sort of crying or sleeping or whatever they do is with food. And so we'd stagger their feed. So if we needed a crier, we, we'd get a hungry one. <laughs> oh, on, just cry. <laughs> what they do. Um, and if we needed a sleeper, you know, we'd have a sleeper, one who dead. Or, uh, and, and he's just sort of, that, this one, it stopped working. Can we have another, please? <laughs> <laughs> you clearly have quite a lot of control over this production. It's your production company, does it? Your wife, yes. Philippa, is the producer. So it's very yes. much a family thing. How did you decide on the baby's name? What's the baby going to be called? Oh, well, um, it's sort of a secret, really, because it doesn't, we doesn't get named for ages, because they, they can't agree on anything, and oh. they can't agree on the name. But um, actually, it was Philippa who was really adamant. They, uh, two Christmases ago, she surprised me with a, uh, Jack Russell. Uh, who, uh, no, the baby's not called Jack Russell. <laughs> um, it's called Rover. Uh, who, who I named Jim, and all our, all our pets have middle names, and his full name is James Henry. And so this was, none of the writers had any say in it. Philip insisted that the baby is, is James Henry. So oh. we, we smirk every time anybody calls it James Henry, because we just see this little terrier. <laughs> <laughs> in a blanket. I, it's <laughs> wonderful. You can tell when series are really taking... I mean, I have to say, I've always enjoyed it. It's great viewing for me. It's just a delight, because the scenery's good, the acting's good, the humour's good. Um, the casting is also good, and this mm. time you have Dame Eileen <gasps> Atkins coming on board. Dame Eileen, yeah, mm. I know. What a treat. So who does she play? She plays um, Auntie Joan's sister. Auntie Joan dies, unfortunately. Oh. <gasps> Stephanie Cole. Yes, and we Coronation Street. <laughs> Uh, not the first actor that's happened to, actually. <laughs> um, and so her sister, we'd never heard of before, turns up in the shape of Dame Eileen Atkins, who is a, an absolute 
joy mm -hmm. and she loved her time down in Cornwall and, and loved the crew and the cast and she stayed down pretty much the whole time. She loves Cornwall too. Well, do you love Cornwall? Because you must do. You, you film it in Port Isaac, which yeah. becomes Port Wen. Mm. And I gather you stay down there, so you enjoy coastal living, don't you? Yeah, we do, yeah, yeah. And we, where we live in Dorset, we're not on the coast. <laughs> Dorset Mafia are in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've no change. Um, <laughs> The locals. <laughs> yeah. um, we, we're, we're 15 miles inland, but we can, on a clear day, see the sea because yeah. we're quite yeah. we're quite high up. What also came across this year? On, on, so I saw it last year for the first time. It's repeating this year. This amazing series on the horse, and you are no, not an inconsiderable horseman. You're now president of the British Horse Society. Yes. And you have. I was just reading up 14 horses now. Though. Yes, we do at the moment. It's a bit How of can a... you afford to be here? It's mucking out. It time. is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a bit of help. You have staff. Uh, oh. We have uh, we have Aaron Louise Ryan who looks after the horses and a lot of our animals. We couldn't we couldn't live without her. Um, but yes, we got forty. We picked up another one in Cornwall. We picked up a, a Lusitana a dressage horse. Wow. Mm. Am I right in thinking I saw you riding in a carriage at Royal Ascot? Oh yes, last year <laughs> with the, in the royal procession. Yes, with a top hat. Yes. So what what? <laughs> You were in the royal procession, there was the Queen, you know. <laughs> and then there's Martin Clue. There's grinning, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Frankie de Tory said I've got a bigger cheer than the Queen. I'm <laughs> sure that's... So if you see me on the stamps, that's why. <laughs> Enjoyable? Oh, it was so exciting. Well, you know about all the Queen's horses, don't you? Yeah, it was so exciting. We had lunch at Windsor Castle. We thought there were going to be hundreds of people there, but there were just a, a, a sort of few people from the, the horsey community. Mm. Um, and of course, Her Majesty knows her horses, doesn't she? And, and how. Yeah. And how. I loved that bit in your programme where she was given a horse, the Canadian, the Mounties. Yes. Gave, I mean, I don't know how many horses she must have, but the sheer delight on her face was, what, another one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She does, and she loves every one. And you, you know, I'd go to the Royal Windsor Horse Show and did com compare the tattoo there on the Saturday night. And, and I went down in the arena during the day and presented a prize to a horse. It was the place and then the queen came in calm as anything it can tell you know yes yeah, she knows um, she's but doing. you're doing a bit also for macmillan for the biggest coffee morning in the world this year I yes guess, on the 30th yes. Of september yes the 30th it's the 21st coffee morning um and i i've i've been doing it for about eight years just sort of you know Pub helping publicise it, and it is the I don't know. Do, do any of you hold coffee mornings? You know about the world's biggest coffee morning. Well, the, this is it's, this is the world's second biggest coffee afternoon. Actually, <laughs> it's so um, it's such a lovely thing because it just enables and empowers uh, people to hold their own event, and you know all you need is that and a couple of mugs, and you're raising money for Macmillan. And last year, um, they raised nine million pounds, yeah, which wonderful. is it's yeah. really incredible, isn't it? Really, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, we'll send you away with a jar of instant coffee and, and a riding crop. Martin, <laughs> a delight as ever to have oh. you on. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Clunes. Thank you very much. Thank you. We won't be needing the police. You won't be needing that money, Mr. Chester. You've got to let Marlowe go. Tell him. There's little boys in a room somewhere in London. He's playing with a gollywog. Inside the gollywog's a time bomb. Just like this one. Bomb's set to go off exactly 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll set this one. One minute. I got a plane ticket to Rio. Once I get there, nobody can touch me. I take the money with me. I get on the afternoon plane. Should reach there about 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, our time. I'll book through a call to this number so I can let you know where the boy is. You'll have plenty of time to get him out and dismantle the bomb. Principle of the bomb is very simple. Works like an ordinary alarm clock. When the mechanism reaches the time for detonation, it releases a capsule containing acid onto a thin metal plate. This, in turn, burns through the plate, makes the electrical contact, releases the charge. 
The acid's been released. It'll take uh, 20 seconds to burn through. <laughs> you bastard. There's enough explosive in the proper bomb to blow the side of the house off. Now perhaps you'll see why you better let him go. Yeah. Gray. Have a look. Come here in a moment, will you? <laughs> Get this down to the lab. I want to check thoroughly. Details of how it works. Special attention to the timing device and method of detonation. I want to know where the components came from. the second 1718 62 days out of England and in a few hours I begin my new job as governor of the Bahamas pledged to clean the pirates out of the Caribbean Sea a few miles away is Nassau the pirates stronghold Get on there! I have only a single ship the Delicia but my biggest gun is your majesty's offer of pardon to these lawless men Lieutenant Beamish, you seem to be preparing for battle. Sir, we're only a few hours sail from Nassau Harbor. I said nothing about bringing powder and shot from the magazine. Well, I imagine you'd want to clean the cannon and prepare for action. For oh, action, yes. You want us to enter Nassau Harbor with all guns blazing. I see, sir. It's the only language pirates understand. Mm-hmm. Is that what they taught you at midshipman school? Why, uh... Why, yes, sir, it is. Christopher. Do you ever stop to think that many of these pirates used to be honest English seamen, and That's many of them were held as heroes during the war with Spain? A great mistake it was too, sir. Why, most of them are nothing better than privateers. Seems time to remind you, Lieutenant Beamish, that I was nothing better than a privateer. But I don't recollect that the Admiralty let that fact bother them, when I brought in enemy ships as prizes. I, uh, beg your pardon, sir. When the war was over, you didn't turn to piracy. No, I could make my way with that. But those poor devils over there, England showed its gratitude to them by letting them rot in port for want of an honest berth. They only know one trade, so now they're using it the best way they can. That may be so, sir, but we're still charged with cleaning them out. Lieutenant, according to my latest information, there are seldom less than a dozen pirate vessels in Mass or Harbor, five times our number of able-bodied men, also a fort with half a dozen cannon. You think right, me, sir? Ooh. Sometimes I wish I could, you know. Now, the southern coast deserted. I'm going to land there tonight. Make your course south by southwest. Aye, aye, sir. You ought to remain aboard in charge of the ship. I'm going across the island on foot with Benji. To Nassau? Mm -hmm. But, sir, if you don't think at all of us, with the ship and our guns are strong enough. Oh, we have a stronger weapon than cannon to use against the pirates. King George's proclamation of pardon. If we go in fighting, you know, I may never get a chance to use that. Well, I wish you luck, sir. Thank you, Benji. Uh, but, uh, suppose they don't accept the pardon. I mean, what shall I do if they hang you? Well, if they hang me, I'd be greatly obliged if you'd fly the flag at half-mast. 